And welcome to Bro Quick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life. And we are everyday people like to welcome you all to the show. You know, today we're getting ready to discuss the state of black relationships. Not in particularly the interaction between a black man and a black woman, although we may roll into that. But the purpose of this topic is the state of the relationships. Like, how did we get to where we're at today in accordance with one another? Right. So to help me on this journey, right, because we're getting ready to travel, right, I got low key in the building. What's up, fam? What's going on, brother Black? Low key. All right, we, 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 we getting ready to... We getting ready to take off, man. You know, we, we finna jump in the car, right? You know, and we finna take y'all for a ride. So y'all, we, y'all come ride with us, right? But look, I want to start off by saying that, you know, the, the state of mind, right? In accordance with some of our actions that stems from slavery, right? We want to lay the foundation out because one, as far as the black man during slavery, they called Buck where he had to go and sleep with the women to produce children for the slave master so that they could grow up and work or be slaves, right? So he had to go around and sleep with a lot of women. And, you know, in that in, in those days, there was no, I mean, black people didn't like being slaves. So the, the pleasure or something to take their mind off of that harsh labor was sex, right? But what I'm saying is that frame of mind didn't come from black people. That mindset came out of the white man's mind. So if we carrying on any of those type of actions in today's time, then we are doing the slave master's bidding because that's where it derived from. You see what I'm saying, Brother Loki? And right. the, my thing is, because we, we, we and, and see, no, no one has the 100% full answer because this been going on for, let's see, 100, uh, about 158, 50 something years now, and we haven't. Uh, came up with a solution to how to break uh, that cycle. Uh, how do you think, uh, for as your opinion on, how can we uh, get out from under some of the things that we subconsciously do that was given to us or that was forced upon us and taught to us by and out of the slave master's mind? Well, what we're doing is is something that we've been talking about for a while, but now it's about to come to a head. And, you know, what we're doing with the Sufiota Moors, with the Moorish Empire, is we're adding another piece to the puzzle because there's been so many great schools of thought that have come, you know, the Pan-African School, uh, the Black Panthers, their contribution the Nation of Islam, the 5% Nation, the Rastafari, uh, you know, even, you know, to to a certain degree, even what the Israelites, you know, right. have offered the up, you know, right. the RBG, right. you know, um, I mean, and the list goes on and on, you know, and the Moors, you know, um, have been around for thousands of years. 
you know, but as far as, you know, what a lot of Moors are aware of today came from the 1930s and Prophet Noble Jarrah Lee, you know, but the thing is, is that, you know, Noble Jarrah Lee only had, you know, a very short period of time to be able to really push the line with what he was presenting before he transitioned. And, you know, you got a lot of Moorish Americans, you know, to this day that are religious zealots and they're, you know, not doing a good job of updating the doctrine and they're getting lumped in with the sovereign citizen movement, which is the European movement, the same as black women getting caught up in the feminist movement, which is also a European movement, you know. So as far as the sovereign citizen thing is concerned, it's not that some of that information, you know, we can't take it into consideration or even use it to some degree, perhaps, you know, but we got to understand that, you know, there are already things in place that the boards of antiquity put in place in terms of treaties and, you know, doctrines, even, you know, newer doctrines that were introduced you know, such as the United Nations Declaration for the Rights of Indigenous People, you know, uh, you know the, the way that we can use our religious rights, you know, in terms of Sharia law, you know, for the Israelites, they can use, you know, uh, you know, the Bible, you know, whatever Bible that they prefer, you know, as far as their religious rights are concerned. And, you know, we're along with that, you know, us using you know, our quote unquote race and national origin to our advantage because there's rights and privileges that come along with that, you know. So I have something in front of the judge now that we'll be able to expound a little bit more on once we get some signatures laid down yeah. and we'll be able to offer up some templates so we can give people some hands on tangible solutions so that we can actually really carry on the legacy of Prophet Noble Jarrah Ali, Mansa Musa, and all of these, you know, superheroes that came before us that, you know, laid the foundation for us to actually put something forth to affect change, you know, um, you know, in the present day, you know, because the problem with black people, like we always say, is that it's the culture, you know, so we yeah. have to have, you know, and every action is motivated by an incentive. So right. we have a long list of incentives, a long list right. of incentives that we know black people want because they told us they came to me personally and told me that they wanted and we got it. Right. So we're going to we're going to give it to them, you know. Um, and so this, you know, we're going to add this to the mix. And, you know, from my perspective, I think that this is going to, you know, be a, uh, you know, uh, a, a monumental action that's going to be put forth that's going to, you know, be, in a, be the nail in the coffin for this Negro mentality. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because the the organizations that, 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 that you mentioned, purpose was to give us back our mind. It was to uh, establish some... Uh, wealth and it was to remove fear out of us right because he 400 four, over 450 years of him pumping his mind or pouring his mind into your mind 400 and some years into our minds right so they these organizations come and say, saying look this who you are let me give you back your mind so you can Stand up right, right, and give him back his mind. But he is wise or wickedly wise, I, I should say, right? Because he always knew that there would be those coming to uh, give black people back their minds and stand them up or they would call a savior. They would call a mock D they would call a resurrector, a healer, warner, whatever, right. To give black. And he knew that. So he said, look, right. I train, I train these black people in America. Right. And I don't like when others come and try to, like they were saying in the movies, stir up my good Negroes, right? So he would make his 
black people, the ones he taught, he'd make them reject anything that came with a, a different language, some different words, a different religion, a different way, a different drum than what he told them that was okay. So subconsciously or they automatically would reject it at first. So you had to have a special kind of love to keep going in, trying to give the black people who were under the the spell of white supremacy their mind back because they they fought you. They didn't want, you know, man, look, here goes some knowledge that's coming from black folk. Man, and they would be like, man, anything coming from black folk ain't no good. Uh, I want it from the white man. The white man, ice is colder than your ice. You know, that, that's a conditioning, All right? So I say this, Brother Loki. I say that, look, if you are a black man or a black woman, and if you even say that uh, it don't matter what color Jesus is, and you got a picture of a white Jesus in your mind, then you are his Negroes. You belong to him. You his woman. And you going you gonna to stifle uh, the plight of black people because you are agent for him. You He, he, he gives you uh, your joy and not uh, the black man, that the upright black man, the black man who has knowledge of self, that's conscious. And so, do you think that um, there'll be a separation, or how do we work this? You know how we how we work this thing? Because this, and the reason why I say this though, bro, low key is that I haven't seen man brothers and sisters hurt because man, they had a brilliant idea, right? Came straight from the God, right? They run home till they love one. And that love one just dumped all on the idea, right? Because they they in their mindset is treating they they significant other like the slave master. Oh, that ain't gonna work. Nigga can't do that. Go sit down somewhere or yeah, right, you got a plan. And but that's how the slave master treated the black man. But he knew that everything he got came from the black man. He just couldn't make it publicly known. I.e. I, I, example, even in the music industry, black man better wrote the song and sing it, but they, they'll take it, get a white group and have them sing it and put their face on the album, man, and just took it to, because they couldn't let the world know that in that something that's of, of genius we can't let the world know that you created it. We told the world that we found you in the jungle swinging on trees. You know, how we going to justify the lie if you keep building, right? So, I, I guess my question is, you know, how do we, how do we continue? Uh, or, or do we don't continue and just say, hey, look, man. Since you all, okay, let me make sure put it this way. In this point in time, do you think that people are still asleep and they don't know that they're carrying out the wishes of their former slave master? Or do they know consciously, but they feel as though, hey, this is who, this, this is who buttered my bread, so I'm, this is who I'm riding with. I'm not going to take a chance. On building something with black people. Oh, hey. Um, you know, there, it's hard to say what the percentage is. It's definitely a lot more conscious, uh, you know, Africans out here. When I say Africans, I'm talking about black people worldwide. Um, especially we're talking about here in the wilderness of North America. At the same time, there has been a serious effort on the part of the U.S. corporation to 
put certain things in the game, such as the gay agenda and the whole swirling thing where every advertisement and all these commercials and TV shows and movies, you got, you know, black men with European women and black women with European men, you know, um, for, for with, which could be a, a conversation within its own right. right. But when you, when you, whenever they add these particular things in the mix, it's to offset the information age. Because uh. they're well aware that we're in the age of Aquarius. We're in the age of the knower, the age of the Gnostic, right. you know, which, which, you know, means knowing, you know. So that is the issue. The issue is that there is a low vibratory frequency and that we call the U.S. corporation that is looking to offset the rise. And the thing is, it's really just nature because, no. you know, bacteria is, is, uh, job is to maintain itself. Just like anything else, every, everything down here is trying to preserve itself, even bacteria. So if bacteria has to amalgamate or have children, with the higher frequency in order for it to maintain its existence, then it's going to put out all these movies and all these, right. you know, advertisements that I'm talking Whoa. about. It's about survival. Whoa. It's about survival. And it really gets deep because it's not just genetic survival. It's also spiritual survival. Right. You know, like we said, it shows before, you know, they're trying to go to the place that we talked them about. A Mensa, Sweet By and By, you know, the gray hereafter, the quantum realm, the unfathomable realm. They want to they wanna go there, too, by any means necessary. You know, some of them choose, you know, uh, to things as diabolical as as eating us. You know, oh, wow. uh, you know, we learned a long time ago that the way that we see the modern suits are put together, the way that it's cut in the V shape from the neck on the way down is the way they they that Europeans used to cut the body, used to cut black bodies up before mm. they consume them. You know, right. even, even when it comes to, you know, their legal system is that, you know, people, conscious people got to understand that all that shit is magic. We know that words are spells, you know, so the signature is one of the keys, mm -hmm. you know, and we know and we've spoken on it before that the, the, the sigils in the occult, we call it spirit signatures or sigils in Boondoon, we call it vey -vey's. and you use that to bind or release the deity. Well, right. who are the who are the supreme deities? We are because we have the essence with inside of us called a soul. Right. You know, so the thing is, is that we we it's all you know. At this point, we ain't <laughs> we we've been talking about it, but now we're about to hit a precipice where we about to give these actual tangible solutions because we can talk till we blue in the face about what needs to be done, but we ain't waiting nobody, nobody to do it. Right. You know, uh, everything that came before us, the black occultists and all the other groups that was named and even more, you know, laid the foundations in including the Moors. And we understand that it's just certain things that haven't been implemented yet that can speed this thing up because, mm -hmm. you know, it, we already know that, uh, when it comes to this concept of time, that there's a definitive beginning and ending. What goes up must come down. So things based on the principle of rhythm, which comes from the laws of Tahuti, misnomer called the seven hermetic principles, the after the Greek deity Hermes, which is a uh, a copy, a mock version of the Egyptian deity Tahuti, that uh, this particular cycle, this 500 you know, uh, your cycle from 1492 to 2023 is, it, you know, like Martin say, bound to Drizzown. This has to come to an end. So it's just a matter of, you know, us actually helping to speed up the process. And anybody that this message resonates with, taking this information and spreading it, sharing it, getting it out there, having conversations about it, you know, you can contact us on our social medias, you know, in order to further the conversation, you know, let it, let it be known whenever you do that you got this from Verbal Pick Radio, you know, so yeah. we know where you're coming from so we can put urgency on the messages, you know, hey, so, nice. you know, to answer your question, man, is that, yeah, we, we, there are more conscious, 
you know, African people. But the thing that has stifled the culture is the work that's being done by the low vibratory frequency people that's out here, uh, regardless, really regardless of what their race and national origin is, that's looking to maintain their bacteria status that uh, so they can survive at that particular low frequency. Yeah, yeah, bro, because check this out, man. I saw, I believe it was Insidious 5, right? Right. And the sister, and I saw this in another show as well. But they had it to where the sister, I mean, she protected that white boy. I mean, she, I mean, she, she was his savior. And and no matter how mad she got at him, got no matter how mad she was at him, she always came back to him. And she and she helped him. I mean, she was his ride or die. And it it's like that's well, damn, that's what we talking about. Well. Where are the sisters that's like that for the black men? Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But these shows, they uh, purposely, I believe, create create shows that on one hand have the black woman at odds with the black man, but have her uh, like a, a, a servant, like a... Like a uh, controlled servant like on key you know just on code that she knows how to go in and check on the the, the white man or the, the former slave master right she and she knows how to care and concern about his well-being and safety with passion but harsh with the black man, but that was that was also created through slavery, and vice versa with the black man towards the black female. He might be gentle and uh look at the you know the white female, right? But harsh and rough when it comes to the black female. That's our conditioning, right? That's all. That means if you think that way, you got the mind. You 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 don't have a black mind. You got a white mind. You know, you don't you're not sharing the mind of your ancestors, you know, because your ancestors didn't see a white Jesus. They knew who he was. They didn't uh, respond, talk, act, think the way that what happened during slavery that created a specific mindset, I should say. So, yeah, but. So, but and I say that to say that we can tell what time we in, because it said that the last trick he was gonna use, he was gonna give us his woman. Arnold Elijah Muhammad said that the last trick the white man was gonna use was the fact that he was gonna give you his woman. And I'm thinking, well, if his woman is anybody that has his mindset, his woman could be black. <clears throat> You know what I mean? And he going to sick her on our ass if we not in accordance with what he say. You know? So that might be, and I'm just, I'm just, I don't know. But the reason why I wanted to bring up this topic is because, man, everywhere I turn, they got these shows and reality shows and talk shows. It's all about uh, bashing black man and trying to uh, emasculinate the black man. Everybody want is coming after the black man. Everybody want to put the black man in a dress or in a wig or in a, you know, it's like, what? Like, damn, are we under attack? Man, listen, man. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> The shit that I see, black man, is like Negroes out here in these streets are destroyed. Not all of them, right. but it's enough of them where one could look at it and just be flabbergasted. Right. You know, and it and it's funny because it always goes back to the culture. Right. You know, me me and black, we, we was talking, um, you know, uh, uh, not too long ago 
about on how the Southwest side over there in Chinatown, they, the, there's a bunch of, uh, Latino apartments and all across the, off the sidewalk, they were out there with they tents up and they were selling, selling food, selling shirts, selling everything. And then when I walked, because, you know, I walked through all these neighborhoods through the city, you know, Scrooston. And then whenever I go to the black apartments and the black neighborhoods, I don't, I don't see that shit going on. I don't see, you know, because the Latino community, they are, as far as household income, they're, last time I checked, they're not yet on the level of the Asian, which is at the highest level in America in terms of household income. And then the Europeans are right up under them. And then you have the Latinos and then you got the, the blacks are way at the bottom. There's a big, large gap of disparity even between the blacks and the Latinos. And then there's a considerable uh, gap of disparity between the Latinos and the uh, Europeans and the Asians. And it's funny because when you look up federal directive number 15, and you look at the legal status, and if you're able to decipher it, I know we've probably done it on this podcast before, is that even based on those federal definitions, if you know what you're looking at, you see that everybody has original status and are considered original peoples, except for the blacks and the Latinos. Everybody mm-hmm. else is considered original status, but that's magic. That's a spell. You know, what they're really saying is, is that every other, everybody who is considered an original people have more rights and privilege. Now, let's say when it comes to the Native American, they're so small in number that they don't have a significant impact on America as a whole. So we don't, we usually don't even really bring them into these conversations that you see on these big platforms, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, so, but, um, the point is, it's the culture, you know, Latinos, they have, they have all those businesses in Chinatown where, you know, for a minute there, I was like, am I in Chinatown or am I in Latin town? You know, all these businesses. And then they have the off the curb, you know, just selling hand to hand businesses, you know, Mm. entrepreneurship and, you know, black people, you know, they, you know, they, yeah, they, you know, they do sports and they do things of a, of an entertainment fashion, but a lot of that, a lot of that stuff is manipulated directly by Europeans. So the right. music that gets put out is garbage. You know, uh, they tell the Negroes to set up and dribble. You know, they can't, they can't make any, uh, statements of value. Look what happened to Kyrie Irving. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, so entertainment is, is, uh, by and large is controlled. Wow. And and, manip- and manipulated and ran by Europeans. So the difference between you know some of these, even some of these black uh, billionaires and millionaires that are entertainment industry, they're they're few and far in between. You know, they're such a small number, and then they're controlled and they're limited. But when you talk about Latino businesses, yeah, they might not be the most popular people on the planet. You know, in terms of entertainment and things of that nature, but they creeping on a come up and their household income trumps us like <laughs> it ain't even close. Yeah. You know, I think that, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of paraphrasing. I don't, I don't remember the exact numbers, but Dr. Claude Anderson was talking about how many times uh, resources flip within the Latin community. And I think it might be like five times, you know, and in the black community, it don't flip one time. As soon as we get our resources in our hand, it goes to another community. So, yeah, the Latinos, they're quietly creep, creeping on the come up and they're involved in industry. When you talk about them having brick and mortar businesses, them having off the curb businesses, that's not being manipulated by Europeans. They might be in European jurisdiction, but they also have their own countries. They got consulates. They got embassies. They got Bureau of Vital Statistics. They got international allies. You know, now, of course, you know, there there ain't nobody perfect. Of course, you got corrupt governments and things of that nature. But when we compare and contrast, I mean, we getting washed. Right. If we talking and we talking from that particular perspective, right. you know, and a lot of us, you know, in particular and in, in really probably all the way across America. But in particular in this city, you know, we live in the same neighborhoods. Fifth Ward is 50 percent Latino, 50 percent black straight down the middle, right. you know. And when I walked through the neighborhood several times, I seen it first. And then when I looked up the numbers, it was like damn near like 
literally it was like uh based on, based on the last sentence that uh that uh that I was actually reading it was literally like nine thousand something Latinos and nine thousand something blacks. So we live in a lot of the same conditions, but in terms of how we're handling our power, wealth, and resources, totally different. So the culture, the cult, you know, Negro uh, culture is a European product, right? And that's the you problem. Know? That's the problem. So until we, you know, make it an African product. We make it an indigenous, an African indigenous product, then it's going to continue to go into circles. And that's where we come into play. So we inject international uh, occult, indigenous, African centered thought to the conversation so we can push this thing forward and speed things up. Man, excellent. That facts, facts, man. If we, if we so tied up into European culture and not establishing our own, then all our blood, sweat, tears, and hard work will be in, in, into lifting him up, but not ourselves. See, the, 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 the Latin culture and the Asian culture is for them. It's for La Raza. It's for them. It's for the people. It's for, and that's why they do it. We do it. For approval or to uh, be noticed or something by white folk is the reason why we, you know, we we put we I mean we put our energy into things that's benefiting others or other than ourselves. When we got the we we got the the legs, the arms, we got the mind, we got the the resources, right? But the love of self or the love of the people or the love of the community is not is what we got to get. Meaning you, you want to do this because you love your block, your street, your community, your, you know what I mean, your people. You know what I mean? You got pride in being a more. You got pride in, in, in being who you are. You know, whether you call yourself Hebrew, Israelite, more. Muslim, whatever the terminology, show it in your actions is for the pride that you have within. Right? Because, and the reason why I said that is because the the European mindset gave the approval that we only like blacks if they entertain us. And if you are going to entertain us, we want you to look like this and dress like that because that's what we get off to. So once again, now you got to go out there and book dance or do the dance to give him what he want. And then he going to give you this fiat paper that he printed up and put it in your hand. But at the same time, he laughing because he's saying, damn, I got the gods and the goddesses. You know what I'm saying? I, right where I want them, and all I gotta do is give them this mat, to give them this blank, this blank paper, give them this paper, and they finna go at it, right? But uh, we haven't realized that we can create our own paper for ourselves, you know, and put some value to it. Uh, but then again, the will, the the will power, the will has to be there too. So, bro, and I, this is a topic. Like I said, we we just we just establishing uh, some 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 foundation or some or, or a position ourselves to gain to gain ground on this particular topic. But you know, it, the solutions, the answers are so many, bro. It's it's so many different angles to this thing, but he knew that, you know, he like humped it, dumped it us, man. We I, could nobody put us back together again. We in so many different pieces or they cut us Osiris up and uh, put him in that box. And, you know, scattered the pieces around. We so scattered around. It's like, and that woman, that woman. Got and he knows the love of that woman got the power to put us back together again, but he he gonna make sure we at odds with one another because 
The goal is is not us to unite or not for us to come back whole again in his eyes. Our desire is to come back whole. And his desire is to keep us torn apart. And the the one that can put us back together is because she birthed the us is the black woman. Uh but he raised her. Well we got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> We got a problem, man. Oh, damn, we got a problem. We we fighting this we fighting this man back for our woman. And he saying, Look here, man, I I got welfare, man, I got stripper poles, nigga, I got drugs, nigga, I got music, nigga, I, I got the dances for him. You nigga, what you got for him? You know what I'm saying? And we like what shit. <laughs> we building, bro. We 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 my, we we got their nature. We know them, but yeah, hey, man, hey. it is what it is, bro. Right. Like, hey, man. Right. But you know what? It's like you said earlier, though. Like you said, you got to be the example, and we just got to get busy doing we doing working, and everything else will fall in place, bro. You so right. We just got to keep right. grinding, man. Right, right. You know, and I want to, uh, you know, go ahead and start and put the message out there to the Foundation of Black Americans, the ADOS. I'm going to start with y'all um, in this statement is that I know that y'all formed out of the motivation for reparations. And, you know, black people, I won't say that they don't have a chance, you know, I, I mean, anything is possible, you know, but one thing I know for sure is that the Moors, they have yet to actually try to get reparations. And that's where, you know, we're going to come in and help because we know who to contact and we have treaties, you know, within the treaties is states are right to reparations and and treaties based on you know we just talking about the u.s in this instance is uh is of the highest status it is supreme law of the land you know so also i want to mention this is that because when you get to talking about reparations you know um a lot of brothers and sisters you know they 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 call it, you know, they try to relegate it to just Europeans. But we got to understand that this conversation, we need to expand it. Mm-hmm. And we need to expand it to also to African nations. It's, it's not that our primary focus is not Europeans, but just so people can't pigeonhole the conversation to make it to where they try to scapegoat it and say, oh, you know, uh, we're just uh, uh, begging and you know, which most most people are, are intelligent enough to know that it's bigger than that, you know, and that there is no real compensation that could ever happen for the atrocities that happened that to our ancestors. Right. You know, but but at the same time, you know, uh the Moors, we enforce the law, you know, period. That is the duty of a Moor. That's a part of if you're an active Moor and you've been in it as long as I've been, then you know that we enforce the law. You know, that's our duty. So, you know, part of us enforcing the law was taking the, not, the knowledge that we have, that we know that reparations are within the treaties, that we, it's our job to enforce that, you yeah. know, and not even just with the Europeans, but worldwide. You know, even if the African nations are down the line, even if we do that after we handle the Europeans, it, don't, it just needs to be a conversation so we don't allow people to pigeonhole us, you know, and also reparations are grants. So if you think it's okay to get a grant to go to their schools, then you ought to feel that it's okay to get a grant in the form of reparations because legally that's what it is. It states it in the treaties. It calls it a grant in the treaties. These are treaties from the 1600s to the 1800s, Mm. you know? And in all of these particular African nations that were a part of these treaties with these Europeans, first of all, they was catching bodies. That's how the treaties came into play in the first place. The treaties were stating that the Europeans were saying that don't enslave us and we won't 
do we won't enslave you. Well, let me rephrase that. The Europeans, because you had treaties that were the, from the perspective of the Moors and treaties that were from the perspective of the Europeans, you could tell by the way that they were written out and the way that they were stated. So in the treaties, it was all about equal protection. And shout out to Dr. Asar Heru Bay because he pointed out the Moors violated those treaties and the Europeans violated those treaties. So we ain't gonna act like we just so holy and now that you know we were so perfect in what we're doing. You know we we vi- we were violate we violated our own people and we violated our contracts too. So let's not pigeonhole these conversations and say, oh well, the Europeans they didn't ever go by treaties. Well, we were violating them too. Right. <laughs> you know, right, so right. let's get rid of these, you know, straw man points and let's focus on the goals and shit that we can actually apply because at the end of the day it's it's about impacting the culture. You know, it's not even about what you may think the outcome may be, it's about what we know we can do and we can actually impact the culture. We can impact the culture just by having these conversations, right. by bringing them to big platforms, Come by on. offering up incentives, by making it international, getting other nations involved in the conversation. Right. Right. We're the most popular people on the planet. We right. need to start getting these other African nations and the diaspora involved, the Caribbean involved, right. South America involved, Africa involved, Africans that live in Europe, Africans that live everywhere in Poland, Poland. Shout out to the Moors, the Moorzine out in Poland. I put them in my motion because I already understood that we need to not just implement Moors, but Africans worldwide into this conversation. Mm. You, when you are more, you think internationally. When you conscious, right. you're supposed to think internationally. Exactly. We got to get out of this domestic block to block mindset on, in the way that we converse. Yeah. We're cosmic people. We say it in conscious people all the time. Well, let's think mm. cosmically. Right. Let's think internationally. On right. a, uh, uh, which I know that that's mundane versus you know uh, uh, subconscious or, or or cosmic. We we understand that, but at the same time, and I've said this in many podcasts that. One of the ultimate benefits of these conscious cultures is that it's going to lead you to spiritual devices that are indigenous and African centered, which is really <laughs> like some of the great teachers said, uh, OG Bobby Hemmett, Brother Penny, Dr. Eileen Bay, so on and so forth, is that, you know, on one level, yeah, they got guns and they got military, but it's one realm that they can't fuck with us in, and that's the realm of the occult, which mm. occult means hidden culture you know it is our hidden science it's our hidden way that we manipulate creation you know understand that you know so Mm. we got the tools we know where all of this comes down to we crossing all our t's and dotting all our i's we got it from the occult perspective and we got it from the mundane perspective which at the end of the day both touch just like the vesicle pisces it's two ciphers that touch in the middle so one ain't greater than the other Right. The more you get into the occult, the more that you realize how much it has to do with this mundane human shit. So, you know, we ain't, ain't nobody, can't nobody, I don't give a damn what your philosophy is. Ain't nobody holier than thou. Error, ain't nobody got all the motherfucking answers. Right. We all put it into the gumbo, and when we eat, it's going to be good because everybody had a piece of the puzzle, and that's what this thing about. Come on, bro. Well said, bro. That, you just gave us uh, a perspective on how to move forward into the future and and how to build. Yeah, what was done in the past, done in the past. We need to shine that light into the the, the future, and, and 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 carve a pathway for ourselves. So this is this is futuristic. It's time to start building and uh, preparing ourselves for what's for for. Uh, what we're getting ready to venture into, uh, in 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 a in a future time, you know, because the planet is not sitting still. We we're moving and we're moving into the future, and our mind and mindset have to match. Well, it has to be on a, has to be on time. So yeah, I man, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, uh giving us a direction to prepare for uh because it's coming whether we whether we want it to come or not and we have to be we have to have the right frame of mind for this future and this right time that's coming all right 
Excellent, bro. All right, well, uh, you know how we do it, man. I, I, bro, you know, we going you know, uh, we not through. You know, we, we, we keep coming back at the right time, you know, on the right day with the right topic. You know what I mean? And and we don't mind sharing and riding with you guys here on Vogue Pick Radio. My, reminding you all, come out July 15th, Vegan Vibes, 2 to 10 p.m. on lo, where it's located on 310 North Street. 310 North Street, in the Heights, Vegan Vibes, 2 to 10, July 15th, be there. Brother Low Key, anything you got to say before we ride out of here? Man, be there at the Vegan Vibes because you know you fuck going to be there third up. You know what I mean? You know, go, come join us out there. We're going to be doing our third thing. You know, uh, uh, you know shout out. <laughs> so with that being said, shout out to the Eternal Thug, Tupac, Abaru Shakur. I've been listening to so much. Come on. Your story, man, I'm just always inspired. Right. And motivated, you know, by your spirit. Yeah. And, you know, uh, last thing, you know, that I say about FBA and ADOS, you know, contact, you know, us at Morris Empire at IG at Morris Empire on Facebook. Uh, we can give you some, uh, you know, some, some solutions, some, some, you know, some information, some stuff that we can get to you in terms of what's the next move on this reparations thing. Because I'm going to be honest, you know, just in my, now this is my opinion, you know, y'all ain't got the answers, but we got the answers, period, Mm -hmm. you know, and we're putting forth the action right now to show and prove that. So come holla at us, you know, um, we gonna, we gonna, we, you know, we gonna, we gonna put this thing down for you. And as far as the aboriginals, you know, the Moors were the first ones to put out, you know, anything talking about aboriginals. I had shit from over damn near 14, 14 years ago within my affidavits referring to ourselves as Aboriginal and Indigenous, Aboriginal and Indigenous rights. It's in the motion that I got uh, that's about to go before the judge in about a week right now, you know, I haven't that included. But I've had right. that for like 14 years just in terms of the understanding of it. And, and you know, so y'all come on y'all come over here too man y'all 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 come back home you know i know y'all over there starving y'all looking you know for little crumbs that you can pick up and try to make something you know work but it ain't happening over there (laughs) right you know now this is my opinion you know don't you know but i'm just just from my perspective y'all ain't got it you know so come over here with with the moors you know keep doing your your cold studies keep gaining your understanding you know Keep building on your school of thought. I don't care what your school of thought is. If you conscious, keep building on that school of thought because we all need each other. You know, we ain't nobody greater than nobody. We're right. all equal in this thing. We got to look out for each other. We got to protect and provide for each other. For the men, you know, um, for the women, stop protecting these liabilities. You know, these, you know, these weak men out here, man, they're, we, we, uh, when it's, when it's all said and done, they're, they're liabilities to us because, when it comes to us having to protect the women and children, you know, we're going to have to protect the weak men as well. So stop perpetuating weakness in these men and right. building that up and, yeah. and showcasing that and co-signing that because y'all got to understand that they're a liability to us. That make our job harder. We right. got to protect them. Right. You know, they ain't finna be out here swinging motherfucking swords and knocking heads off. They ain't right. gonna be talking this talk the way that we talking. The kind right. of energy that we got to make it resonate with you. They don't got it. Right now. So, so right. stop co-signing that bullshit, man. Yeah, yeah. Look, oh my God. Mothers, <laughs> mo- mothers, mothers. Look, mothers. Don't have your young son as a mother out wearing no damn bonnet and you just letting that shit happen. Mm, 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 mm. You know what I come on, get get it together, man. Get it. Don't 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 let them get us again. Or get them yeah. Yeah, we you know, it, it's it's time out for all that, man. Time out. Bro, right. I right. appreciate that man. Wonderful show. Once again, brother Low Key, I you know, it's always a pleasure having you on, bro. Dropping science, mathematics to the listening audience. Uh, Verbal Creek Radio. Till next time, we are. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah.